Hello, Wonder Hussy here, standing on the corner in Barstow, California. Most people only know Barstow from driving between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. It's kind of the halfway point. And there was a big outlet mall here. But sign of the times, the outlet mall is completely closed down. That's right, another victim of the economy, or maybe more precisely, a victim of Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Anyway, now that this outlet mall is closed, I was reading that they are proposing to turn this into the world's biggest cannabis marketplace. Okay, we're in California where recreational marijuana is totally legal and we're just across the border from Nevada where recreational marijuana is also totally legal. So it makes perfect sense to catch all them travelers that are going from Los Angeles to Vegas to party for the weekend, and get them to spend some money on some drugs. But of course, there has to be some opposition to the plan. And I was actually reading online that one of the city council members here in Barstow said something like, golly, people already think we're nothing but a drug infested hellhole. Now this is just gonna make it even worse. Okay, that's not an exact quote, uh, <laughs> but it got me thinking. Is Barstow just a drug infested hellhole? Nothing but a wart on the anus of I-15 as it travels through the Southwest. I mean, like I said, for most people, they only know Barso as a place to stop and take a piss. But I feel like that's probably unfair. Barso has a long and very interesting history. It's right on old Route 66. It's right on the old Spanish trail. People have been traveling through Barstow to cross the desert for centuries. And I'll bet you anything, there's a bunch of cool stuff in Barstow and it's a pretty good place to live. So I thought it might be fun to take a ride around Barstow and see if Barstow is really as bad as they say. I mean, would this cannabis mall help the economy of this city that's already hurting? Or is Barstow doing just fine and doesn't need them drug peddlers? Let's find out. Okay, for starters, you can see that Barstow is located smack dab in the middle of a big old desert. The Mojave Desert. One of the hottest, driest, most inhospitable environments on Earth. And nowadays, there's all kind of highway traffic passing right through Barstow. Although technically, I guess the traffic doesn't go through Barstow so much as just blazes right past it. But it wasn't always that way. Back before Interstate 15 was finished in 1966, there was only one way to get from LA to Vegas, and it went right through the heart of Barstow. That's right, Route 66. Come on, everybody, we all know the words. Kingman, Barstow, San Bernardino. That's right, Route 66, the famous transcontinental highway, I guess. It went all the way from Chicago to LA, went right through Barstow. And that's one of Barstow's few claims to fame. And they do lean pretty heavily into this Route 66 shtick. You can see here, there's even the Route 66 Motel. I actually tried to get a room here last night, but they were sold out. Can you believe it? I think it was only like 55 bucks a room and it had a pretty good rating. And that's probably at least in part due to the fact that they have all these cool old cars and old farm implements and historical stuff scattered all around the grounds. If you're a car guy, you'll know what each and every one of these buttes is. Isn't that like an old Model T? And then look over here, they have this little fake garage set up with that beautiful Dodge. You tell me what year that is, oh my goodness. This is when cars were cars, man. And <laughs> motorcycles were motorcycles. And a back seat big enough to do anything you want in. And look at this one over here, oh my gosh, this one's even cooler. What is this little car? It's adorable. Oh my goodness, this would be such a fun car to drive around, especially if you were taking a road trip along the entire length of Route 66. I mean, look at this amazing mural on the street in front of the motel. Main Street of America, and it basically follows the entire route, route, 
Route 66, all the way from Chicago to LA, winding 2,000 miles all the way. Oh my God, now I really wanna travel the entire route of Route 66. I wanna see the big Texan. Isn't that that steakhouse where if you can eat the 64 ounce steak, you get it for free over in Amarillo? Gallup, New Mexico. Flagstaff, Arizona. Don't forget Winona. King Man, Barstow, San Bernardino. There's Santa Monica. End of the trail. Beautiful blonde bikini babe. What's up with this though? Where's her armpit hair? But of course, Route 66 wasn't built until 1926. And Barstow has been around for a lot longer than that. Matter of fact, you can see here, there's all these cool murals painted on the sides of all these buildings in old downtown Barstow. This one here talks about how the old Mormon trail came right through Barstow, just one of many pioneer trails that crossed through this area. Okay, maybe not many trails, but there were at least two major trails, the Mormon trail and the old Spanish trail. That's right, the old Spanish trail that went all the way from Santa Fe, New Mexico to Los Angeles, California, which was pioneered back in like the 1820s, 1830s, 1840s by, oh, the Spaniards, mountain men like uh, John Fremont and Jedediah Smith, I think. Oh gosh, I'm not sure, but for a history buff like me, Barstow is unexpectedly fascinating because there's tons of these murals all over this old downtown area talking about all the history of all them pioneers that somehow dragged their sorry asses through this miserable baking hot desert and i think the reason that they all passed through barstow is back then there was some kind of natural watering hole maybe the mojave river actually flowed intermittently enough to where they could you know drink water and feed their animals Anyway, people only traveled west on foot dragging wagons until the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad. And of course, the railroad ran right through Barstow. Matter of fact, it still does to this day. There's no uh, passenger service to Las Vegas, but there is to Barstow. I'm just saying, if you don't wanna gamble, you just wanna geek out on history, come here instead. Anyway, not only do they have this awesome rail yard with benches where well i mean i guess you're supposed to sit here and wait for your train if you're actually taking a train but if you're a rail buff it's a great place to sit and just look at all the interesting stuff now i know this is backlit but you might be able to see i'll zoom in way on the farthest track that's loaded up with all kind of military vehicles anyway besides the viewing benches there's also this really cool kind of like museum complex and it's in a really badass old historic building. This historic building is actually called the Barstow Harvey House. Harvey houses were basically luxury hotels along the route of the Transcontinental Railroad where passengers could rest and dine in sumptuous style, even in the middle of the desert, served by young, beautiful, and carefully selected waitresses called Harvey Girls. The Barstow Harvey House, which was considered one of the nicest Harvey houses in the whole chain, opened in 1911 and operated until 1971. And now the building is on the National Register of Historic Places and contains several museums, including something called the Goldstone Visitors Center. Oh my God, I had to at least peek my nose in this Goldstone Visitor Center, which basically is just like a... I guess it's just like a museum about space. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is just a, I don't know, a museum dedicated to, well, something to do with the deep space network. And I'm not sure what that is. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to go home and do some reading. Oh my God, look at this. Sounds of space exploration. People are always asking me if I'll ever run out of ideas for YouTube videos. No, never. I'll never get bored. Look at When I got home, I did some research and learned that NASA operates a deep space communication station in the desert outside Barstow, where giant antennas communicate with satellites and spacecraft in the farthest reaches of the galaxy. I thought that was pretty cool. And I also thought it was cool that they had a little museum dedicated to it in the historic Harvey House. 
Oh my gosh, wow, this is cool, man. This is the actual Harvey house. I guess this is where the guests would have sat at their fine dining tables with the fine table linens, eating the finest food to be had in the middle of the Mojave Desert, served by the beautiful Harvey girls. Oh, look, here's the menu. Oh my gosh, now remember this place was open from 1911 to 1971, so this is probably a menu from, well, later. Oh, look at that, cocktails, 50 cents. I'll take 10. Oh gosh, it's really hard to uh, shoot footage of this menu because it's covered in glass, but you could get a broiled half chicken, allow 15 minutes for $1.99, how about that? Oh, look here. See, here's those pretty Harvey house girls, and there's even a list of Harvey girls rules. Oh my gosh, I knew it. It says, must be single the length of the contract, must live in a dorm on site, must have a manicure once a week, must never have a man in the dorms. Oh my goodness. There goes the train. No telling how far it's bound. Well, actually it's probably just bound for Vegas, which is only what, a couple hours up the road. But speaking of trains, in addition to this Harvey House display, which I thought was pretty cool, and I didn't even spend half the time I would have liked to. And in addition to the deep space Goldstone Visitor Center, there's also a railroad museum here, which unfortunately I definitely don't have time to go in. Even though I happen to be here during the operating hours, looks like it's only open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And, ah, well, like I said, I'm gonna have to come back. But it's cool because in front of the museum, you know, right by this active operating rail yard, they have all these cool old historic rail cars. And I know there's some railroad buffs watching this channel. And well, if you're a true rail buff, you've probably already been here. But if you haven't, oh my gosh, you'd be in hog heaven. And I thought this was really interesting too. In front of the rail yard, they have this whole sign dedicated to the history of the American hobo. Okay, you know, a hobo, trailers for sale or rent rooms to let 50 cents or wait cocktails 50 cents anyway the hobos the guys that used to you know you, could, you can see how slow that train is maybe it'd be real easy to just run and jump on and ride the rails and see where it takes you well according to this sign the first hobos were basically war veterans it says around the time of the civil war railroads were being built at a frantic pace by the early 1870s there were 60,000 miles of track the war had produced a generation of young men who were used to living under adverse conditions. So with the return of peace, many lo no longer had jobs or family ties. So they would just become itinerant workmen crossing the country by hopping trains. And then it even goes into the origin of the word hobo, which I think it might be from homeward bound or from ho boy, which was a farmhand traveling looking for work. But then what I think is really interesting is it says there was once a clear distinction between hobos, tramps, and bums. Okay, hobos were mostly respectable men and a few women searching for work. Tramps traveled, but were averse to work in any form living by begging and petty crime. Bums were degraded men who tended to stay in one place such as inner city skid rows. And although they might often be found together, hobos consider themselves distinct from and superior to tramps and bums. And who can blame them? Wow, I did not realize that there was a hierarchy of, well, let's just say travelers. Far out, man. And like I said, there's also a Route 66 Mother Road Museum here, which unfortunately I won't have time to go in either, but like I said, I gotta come back. Look at that. Walmart trailers going by the old historic Harvey house. Uh -huh. If that ain't a sign of the times, I don't know what is. Okay, well, now we've seen all the touristy stuff that Barstow has to offer, but I think it might be interesting to go see how true Barstovians live. Uh, according to Wikipedia, that's what you call people from Barstow, Barstovians. Anyway, let's go uh, poke around the town of Barstow. I wanna see, you know, I wanna see some nice neighborhoods. I wanna see some bad neighborhoods. I just wanna see what it would be like to live here. But first, before we start driving around, I think we should stop and get a snack. Okay, this is supposedly the original Del Taco. <laughs> okay, if you've ever been to California, there's a big 
chain, fast food chain called Del Taco, kind of like Taco Bell, but they also have burgers and delicious shakes. Anyway, Barstow's claim to fame is it's the home of the original Del Taco. Now I made a video once kind of disputing that because the actual first restaurant that started the Del Taco chain is about 15 miles down the road in Yermo and it's now called Tita's Burger Den. But apparently the guy who bought Tita's Burger Den turned it into a Del Taco and this was the first Del Taco he built. Let's go in. delicious strawberry shake. Although you'd think they would have at least the Del Taco logo on the cup. This is like this weird blank generic cup. Makes me wonder what they put in it. Uh, at least it says Del Taco on the lid. And it is delicious. Okay, let's go see how the people of Barstow live. Okay, so far it looks more or less like any city in California. Maybe a little bit hotter and a little bit drier. Well, except for maybe the Bail Bonds Hummer painted bright pink. Oh, far out, man. Look, here's the high school. Barstow High School. Can you imagine going to Barstow High School? Well, I bet there's people watching this video who did go to Barstow High School and you can tell us exactly what it was like. I'm sure the kids there do the same thing kids do at every other high school in the USA. Smoke dope, cut class, and have sex. Okay, so these are, I guess, what you would call typical suburban homes in an average Barstow neighborhood. Yeah, that one has bars on the windows, but I don't know, everything looks relatively tidy. I mean, I'm kind of in the middle of town, not too far from the high school, so I can't imagine, you know, this is like a ritzy area. This is just kind of where regular folks live. But speaking of ritzy areas, I'm kind of curious to see like, where's the, where do the rich folk in Barstow live? And I'll be honest, I just looked on Google Maps satellite view to see if there was like a country club or a golf course or, one part of town that had more grass than another, or even one part of town that had more swimming pools than another. And I was not able to identify a fancy part of town, but there was this one part of town that, uh, well, it's called Barstow Heights. It's way off on the edge of town. And they were look like it was bigger lots with circular driveways. And some of them had swimming pools. So let's go check that out. Oh look, these look like some pretty nice houses here. Let's check this neighborhood. Ooh dang, here's a real fancy house. I'll bet you anything, that's a doctor or at least a dentist. Three car garage. Mm, you know it. Dang, look at that garage. Dang, look at that windmill. Dang, look at that landscaping. Uh, according to the 20, the last census, 2020 census, there's about 25,000 people living here. So it's a, it's a small town, but it's a decent sized town. Oh, here's definitely where the rich girl in school lives. The girl whose pants you wanted to get into, but you were afraid her dad would. Oh, well, look at this. Uh -huh. The road just ends at the desert. Road not maintained. I guess it just goes out into the desert. All right, well, I'll go this way. I'll look at a few more houses over here in Barstow Heights. And this is very nice. You know, if I lived in Barstow, this might be the part of town I'd want to live in. But if you're anything like me, well, you want to see the grungy part of town, you know? Let's go look for the Barstow Ghetto. Oh yeah, here's where things look like they really get interesting. Look at this. Who's on first? Sports bar. Bet that place is a lot of fun. Oh, here's some kind of sketchy apartments. Little tiny old historic houses. Looks like people are fixing them up. Okay, this isn't crummy enough for me. Let's keep looking. Okay, now we're literally going over to the other side of the tracks. And I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot different over here. Actually, I know it's a lot different over here because I've driven around this part of town before. I think it's called North Barstow and it is wild. Hang on to your hats. We're on the road to North Barstow. Look at that, sand dunes. 
right in the middle of town. I don't know what this place is, but I love the sign. Tequila. All other information is extraneous. Oh, hold everything. There is a very interesting place up ahead. Look at this. Oh my goodness. I don't know what is going on here, but this dude has an insane collection of old gas station signs, old service station signs. Oh my goodness. Holy wow. All kind of old signs. Old Barstow City Limits sign. Dang. Tom's. What is this place? Dang, a gated community. All right, well, I gotta take this back. Uh, North Barstow is definitely not just a bad part of town. There's plenty of nice houses here. It's hard to tell what's going on here in Barstow. All I can say is this town strikes me as being ripe for a hipster takeover. You know, a gentrification. I'll bet you anything, property values are pretty low here. And I tried to find one of those magazines that tells you the you know, has all the homes for sale, but I couldn't find one. So I'm just speculating that Barstow is probably more affordable than, dare I say, most cities in California. And it's got a relatively favorable climate, beautiful surroundings. You're right in the middle of the desert. You're near Death Valley. You're near uh, Joshua Tree. You're near the Mojave National Preserve. I can definitely see this town being taken over by artists. Yeah. Oh, holy cow. Look at this. Oh, wow. I was just driving down the road and I happened to notice there's this yard with all these amazing, well, looks like art cars. Oh, the sun's right behind them, but holy cow. Oh man, that thing there looks like a ton of fun. Look at that. It's like a, it's got a bunch of seats on the back that spin around like a merry-go-round, but it's on a bike. Uh, and then I guess somebody in front pedals it. Dang, I don't know what's in the water here in Barstow, but I want to drink some. And then look at that thing, and that thing, and that, you can't really see from this angle, but it's a giant, like a dinosaur skeleton mounted on top of a car. Oh dear. Holy cannoli, what was I just saying about a bunch of artists taking over Barstow? Whoever lives there is probably like, shut up, don't tell anyone. Okay, before I leave, there's one more interesting thing about Barstow, and that is it has a drive-in movie theater. That's right, you don't see very many of these anymore, but Barstow, I think, has a two-screen, yeah, there's two screens back there, a two-screen drive-in movie theater open seven nights a week. Now, that's something you just don't see very often anymore. Uh, oh yeah, because they didn't even have the logo on their cup. Well, I went ahead and did it for them. Barstow Del Taco, I love you. And Barstow, I love you. I'm not even kidding. Man, when I set out to make this video, I thought like, okay, I'll go poke around some dusty, dumpy desert town, you know, have a few laughs. Wrong. This place was a thousand times more interesting than I expected. And if anyone from the Barstow Chamber of Commerce is watching, Holla at me, I'd love to come back, stay a few days, go to all the museums, maybe dine at the finest restaurants, really get an experience. Oh yeah, have some drinks at the wildest honky tonk too. Really get an experience of what it's like living in Barstow. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour. And at the end of it all, well, what do you think? Do you think Barstow would benefit from having that giant cannabis mall? Or is having a giant cannabis mall just gonna make everything worse? I can't decide. I might have to come back and sample the cannabis to make up my mind. I'll be back.